the splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice, he's the splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice, well, he's the splendor of a king, clothed in man. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice.
Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Wonderful Wednesday in the Word. I'm Wesley T. Leonard, Senior Minister of Southside Church of Christ here in the city beautiful of Orlando, Florida. I want to first tonight thank you all, the great church of Southside, for loving and showering me and my family with so much affection, so much care, so much concern, blessing us immensely as we've celebrated 25 years together at the great Southside Church. Many of you outside of our jurisdiction may not understand. Uh, I was called here, and hired here 25 years ago, Dr. Jerome Adams, uh, and just a few people, probably 12 or 14, uh, 1999, uh, worshiping the elementary school. We went to a middle school. We bought four and a half acres of property, built an edifice, well over a million dollars back in the early 2000s, paid for it in full. And now God has blessed us with great shepherds, Victor Crumney, Willie Davis. Uh, after the demise of Dr. Adams, we have 12 deacons now, a plethora of people. Great singing, great worship, great fellowship, great ministries. I'm the most blessed preacher in the world. I'm thankful, I'm glad, I'm happy to have served uh, with distinction for 25 years now. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, the depths of my heart, on behalf of me and my family for loving us the way that you have and you've made this ride a joyful one. I wouldn't change anything for the last quarter of a century of my life for being the minister of the Southside Church of Christ. With that being said, let us go into our Wednesday night Bible class tonight. Also, we had a great time this past weekend. My wife has celebrated great church on Sunday, great program, emotional day. Uh, great shepherd's feast. I'm still burping from uh, some of the delectable culinary um, uh, deposits that were made uh, during this past weekend. Thank you, Juan, and thank you all. Tonight, uh, let's deal with the lesson entitled Coping with Care. Coping with Care. I'll hold my scripture tonight. It's none other than First Peter 5 and 7, one of my favorite. And Peter says, casting all of our cares upon him. Why, Peter? Because he cares. <coughs> Excuse me. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. God, the premise of our relationship with God is he cares for us. His motivation to send Jesus to yonder's cross is because God cares for us. The essence of who God is, he cares for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, <coughs> excuse me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The provocateur for God sending Jesus to the cross, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. This ungetaroundable facts in the Bible, chief amongst them is God loves us and he cares for us. And anything you love, hear me now, man, woman, boy, girl, Christian, anything you love, you will protect and you'll provide for. Listen, I, I shouldn't, I, I don't need to be meeting with men to provide for their families. If you love your family, you'll provide for your family. If you love your family, you'll protect your family, even when they may not even treat you like you deserve to be treated. Because God has proven beyond the shadow of a doubt, unget around the fact, he loves us, he cares for us, so that's why he provides for us and he protects us. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And he's the priest of our lives. He cares for what he loves. So then you and I should care for what we love. So tonight, let's cope. Let's deal with coping with care. How do we crystallize and sterilize, perfect, which means complete, our care and concern in life? The, the things in life that concern us, the things... And the things that concern us are the things you care about. Yeah, I could care less who gonna win the National Hockey League Stanley Cup. 
I could care less who gonna win in the soccer championship. Now, I did. Other people don't care. I I said I don't care. But now, when you get down to the NBA finals, you get down to the NFL and the NBA and college football. I care what record the Florida Gators have. I care if the Dallas Cowboys do well. I care. I actually care if the Orlando Magic do well. But look, the things you care about, I care about Pam Leonard and Jonathan Leonard and Brianna Leonard Singletary. I care about Kylan Wesley Skinner and Dallas Wesley Singletary and Dahlia Denise Singletary. I care about Jonathan Wesley Leonard II. Uh, any, anything that I care about, I'm, man, I, I move to protect and provide for. And so tonight, let, let's kind of deal with this coping with care. Because when you care about something, that something or somebody can disappoint you because you do care. The three umbrellas tonight, we've been dealing with more than that recently, but tonight let's, let's be more condensed and concise. Yes, some people, first umbrella, are careless. Remember, we coping with care. We got too many people in the body of Christ and in this world, you know some on your job, you know some in your family, who are just absolutely careless. I listen, I learned you can't hang around careless people. They get you hurt or get you killed. Okay? Or leave you broke. Uh, if you're married to one, man or woman, uh, God bless you. I'm gonna pray for you. Uh some people are careless. Um uh Zechariah the second chapter, verse fifteen says, The city that dwelt carelessly. And he was talking about the old ancient cities in Israel who were just careless. No walls up for fortification. No, no discipline. No planning. No foresight. Uh, you put up in the winter. Uh, you put up in the summer when the fields are ripe with harvest. You store up grain and food for the winter. Lest you be careless and eat it all. And then in the winter you have nothing to eat. So the Bible says... She dealt carelessly, and she became a desolation. See, carelessness, carelessness leads to desolation. It's dangerous when people, particularly Christians, are careless. For First Peter four and eighteen helps us as well. Many careless people in the world. Many careless people in this city. I pray it's not many at our church because careless people leave lives in jeopardy. When people are careless with their own business, you know they'll be careless with yours. I've never understand people. Look, people show you who they are by how they handle their own business. When a man or woman is reckless and derelict with their own affairs and you turn over yours to them, if I see you reckless with your own children, you think I'm going to let you keep mine? <laughs> you leave the church running down Raleigh Street going 80 miles an hour, and you think I'm going to put my grandson in the car with you? You careless. You, you see people careless having unprotected, unsanctioned sex. Careless. When you're careless physically or spiritually, you put lives in danger. Accidents happen and are caused by careless people. Financial loss often occurs when people are reckless or careless with their money or somebody else's. Homes have been broken up. Children have been affected adversely. Lives have been lost all because the acts of careless people. So we're dealing with coping with care tonight. Let's remember some people are careless. Many though, even though we've been talking briefly about physical carelessness, many are careless spiritually. They fail to accept Christ as their Savior 
Or if they do, they procrastinate to accept him as Lord and Savior of their lives. Some neglect a good, strong prayer life. They're careless with their prayer life, careless with their spiritual life, careless with accepting Christ and his church as the vehicle and the ark of safety. Safe, uh, safety. Some people are careless with their church attendance. Hebrews 10.25 Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, even so much the more as you see that they are approaching. Some are careless in their service to God, careless in being involved with ministries of the church. God is displeased with careless living, whether it's physical or spiritual. He expects us to be good stewards over what he's given us. Don't, don't, we learned that in Matthew 25 in the story of the talents. Uh, two individuals, one received five, one received two, one received one. And the one that received the one talent was careless, derelict, buried it. When God puts us as superintendents and stewards over his blessings, he expects us not to be careless. He expects us to operate in love and service and dedication and commitment. Beloved, please, 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 be it physically or spiritually, let us not be in the category of the careless. Secondly tonight, first some are careless. Secondly, some are careful. Some people are careful. Now, I, I know uh, it is popular it is in the jargon of our language to tell people to be careful. But the scriptures, if you study etymology correctly, instructs us to be careful for nothing. And I know that's the antithesis of what is good, common, everyday sense that I'm not teaching against. But Paul taught in Philippians 4, 6, 4 and 6, be careful for nothing. But in everything, through prayer and supplication, make your request be made known unto God. What he's saying is, he's not saying don't be concerned. He's telling us not to worry. That's what I mean by some are careful, some are worried, some are burdened down, uh, some are weighed down by the burdens of life. And the loads we try to carry, beloved, are too heavy for us to bear. You live in such a careful life. See, here's the, here's the challenge. When you, when, you, when you live a careful life, a worrisome life is a better word, you don't let go and let God. Yes, yeah, some people are careless. Some are too careful. It speaks of the faith and the confidence we have in God, through God, by God. Yes, Christians don't have to be careful for nothing. Jesus came to take away the burden of worry. He took away the burden of sin by dying on the cross. We have been free from the bondage of worry, care, and concern. We've been liberated by the blood of Jesus from the bondage of sin. All we have to do now is exercise repentance and faith belief and confidence in God's Son. And we don't have to be kept, you, you know, great athletes, great teams. You can't play scared. You can't be careful. You perfect what you do. You have confidence in your teammate or confidence in your skill, and then you got to let it rip, okay? You throw a ball, you can't guide it. You shoot a ball. You can't get it. You, you just have to have confidence that I've done this a thousand times. I can do it one more. And if God has protected you and your family or your livelihood or your existence for year after year, now you just believe he can do it again. You don't have to be careful. You're careful in the way we use the term. But the biblical uh, definition here, the etymology of what Paul talked about, don't be worried. Don't don't walk around, ooh, whoa, ooh, what's going to happen? Ooh, th this hurricane season coming, ooh, they're breaking in houses, ooh. If 
If I get on I-4, I may flip my car. Careful for what? God's got you. You're in the palm of his hand. And he ain't dropped nobody yet. And here's what I, the reason I'm, I'm concerned and I'm diligent, but I'm not worried or careful is, can nothing happen to me unless God knows about it and God permits it. Hear me again, beloved. For the child of God. Now, this is not for everybody. For the child of God, nothing can happen to us unless God knows about it and God permits it. And if God knows and he permits it, that means it's in his will. And if it's in his will, though it may not feel good to me, it is good for me. Yes, some people are careless. Other people are too careful. That's why the Bible said, you read it in our whole my scripture tonight, 1 Peter 5 and 7. Cast in all your cares, because everybody's got cares. Cast them on him. Throw them to him. Give them to him. Cast your care. You got it. What you careful for? Just give it to him. Casting your cares upon him. And Peter explains why. Because he careth for you. So some people are careless. Some people are careful. Uh, but we rely totally on Christ. It's just what Paul really speaks of in Philippians 4, 6. Many people live in lives full of angst and anxiety, carrying the concern of life or the concern of others. You worried about your children. I know I got children. I got grandchildren. You know, when my children both grown and gone, now they live in different cities. My son lives in Houston, Texas. My, his wife and my grandson, uh, Jonathan Wesley the second, they live in Houston. My daughter lives in Jacksonville, Florida. She's married, happy to marry. Dewan singing to her. They got two kids there. So I got a son in Houston with a grandchild. I got a daughter in Jacksonville with grandchildren. I'm concerned, but I'm not pacing the flow up at night. Look, I just pray for them every day. Every single day I pray for my children and grandchildren. I'm sure you do the same. Now God's got it. I'm not, whoa, this could happen, that could happen. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to live full of angst and anxiety, worried about myself or other people when we got a God that sits high and a God that looks low. God is displeased with people who are worried and full of care. Just cast your cares upon him. The Bible says, why? Because he careth for you. Yes, tonight we talked about people who are careless. You don't want to be in that category. You talked about people who are careful. When termed right, defined right, we don't want to be careful. Here's what the third point is tonight, beloved. Some are care, carefree. We want to fall into the category of carefree people. Ain't worried about nothing. Many years ago, you remember, you got to be about my age or maybe a little younger. Don't worry. Be happy. See, worry will keep you from being happy. Worry will keep you from being content. Worry will infiltrate your heart and mind and keep you pacing the floor at night. Worry will have you living in a million-dollar house and worried about $10 problems. Yes, we want to be carefree. Some are careless. Some are careful. We want to be carefree through Christ. Galatians 5 and 1, Paul the great apostolic says, Stand fast in the liberty where, where Christ has made us free. We live carefree. We're, we're free from bondage of sin, worry, angst, and anxiety. There are many people living with bondage, shackles, and manacles of their past. But we got to be reminded Christ came to set us free. And a covenant relationship with God through Christ is a liberating experience. It frees us from the very things that burden us. He helps the least. It helps the lost, the less fortunate. It'll help us to visit the sick 
It helps us to comfort the bereaved, share the gospel to the lost, take God at his word. John 8, 31 declares, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, John said, and the truth, Jesus declared, will make you free. It's liberating to be in Christ. It frees us from the cares and concerns of this life. You know what? We ought to be carefree. Because this world is not our home. You worried about dying. That's the best thing that happened to you if you're going to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. I understand the human side of that. I'm not bored and destitute of good sense. I don't want to die. Not anytime soon, but I am going to die. You're going to die. We're all going to die. I want to die tomorrow. I want to die next year. I want to die the next 10, 15 years. But when my number is up, I, as a child of God, use the child. We're going to a better place. Yes, beloved, what are you, you worried about stuff and things already on earth, temporal, fleeting things, material things. And the Bible says in Colossians 3 that we ought to set our affections on things above and not on things below. Carefree living. I'm glad I have what I have, but if I lose everything I got, I still got Jesus. And that's enough. Yes, you don't want to be careless. Yes, beloved, you don't want to be, when it's defined right, careful. What we want to be as children of God is carefree. That means we've been liberated. We've been released. We've been freed from the bondage, the manacles, the shackles of sin, and the burdens of this life. This is only available to God's Son, Jesus the Christ, and it is remind, we are reminded of this by the Holy Spirit of the Paracletus, that is our spiritual guide, coping with care. Pray with me tonight. Father God, we're mindful, glad, happy, thankful that you care for us. We're reminded tonight that we can cast, throw all of our cares upon you because you care. You actually care for us. Help us, Lord, not to be careless physically or spiritually. Help us not to be careful, burdened with worry, angst, and anxiety. But, Lord, rather help us to be carefree, freed, liberated from the vicissitudes that life can throw our way. Continue to bless us at Southside and beyond. Give us grace. Give us mercy. Give us freedom and help us to live carefree lives. In Jesus' name, your son, we pray. Amen. Yes, beloved, he cares for us. Some people care, but they can't do nothing about your problems. Some people can do something about your problems, but they don't care. But God, through Jesus, has expressed time and time again that he cares and he has the power to do something about your situation. To him we give the glory. All right, beloved, we're moving now into the month of June. Exciting summer. I want to remind you, we suspend all ministries uh, for the summer and at the holiday season. We give, we actually are a family church. It's time people have vacation and time together. We want you to have a break. We don't want to wear you out spiritually. You'd be surprised how it helps people. Just get a break sometimes. Rotate out. Uh, get renewed, refreshed, and revived. So all ministries will be suspended in June, July, and August. We reconstitute all ministries in September. Be with us this Sunday, Southside Church of Christ, 10 a.m. for Sunday school, 11 a.m. for morning worship. And for whatever reason, you can't be there in person. We want you to be in person. But if you can't, please join us on our social medias, uh, 11 a.m. Southside YouTube, Southside Facebook. And then every Wednesday night, of course, we're going to walk through the Word on Wednesday night 
in another episode of Wonderful Wednesday in the Word. Join us Southside YouTube, Southside uh, Facebook uh, at 7 p.m. Be blessed, be encouraged, and help us to help one another cope with care. Good night.